I was just looking for that next great idea. That's where the whole slew of origin stories kind of started. So I made a list of like historical and fictional characters and you could find names like Joan of Arc or Napoleon or Dracula or whatever, right? And I um, got to Santa Claus and I said, huh, now, nah, and I just moved on. Wait, 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 time out, really? That's how you laugh? When I thought Santa Claus origin story, I was like, ah, oh, I'm not sure I want to do that, right? But then once you say, there's something there, let me see if I can find that non-corny version of this, right? Ow! Oh, oh, you loser! Oh, yeah, well, if I'm a loser, then you're, you're a, you're a, uh, you're, too, you're too far, you're gone. I tried to have a kernel of truth underneath this, all this fantasy, and I found this list of the human... Uh, settlements, the northernmost human settlements in history. In the 1600s, there was this place called Smirnberg, without the S. And it used to be a Dutch and Danish whaling post. There she is, Smirnberg. I thought if you hold off the magic, hold it off. What happened here? Oh, uh, colorful local traditions quirky folklore, that kind of thing, all part of this quaint town's vibrant culture. Because you're gonna, this is a prequel to your Santa. How much can we hold off on the magic until that moment comes across, you know, has to come in? And, um, and I thought that was the fun of it. <laughs> magic in film can be a cheapskate. You know, that's why things like Harry Potter work, because there's rules to everything, right? He's huge. We get squeezed on any chimney. Really? How? I don't know. Magic, I guess. I am, at heart, a traditional animator. You know, I started in traditional animation when CGI was just starting out, you know, but I got into animation because I love to draw. If you can actually get your drawings to come alive and to feel and to think, that's the ultimate form of drawing. And that's what got me into animation. So when CGI came along, uh, I embraced it. I thought it was more of a split in the road. I didn't quite realize that uh, it was being uh, looked at as an evolution. And I never really agreed with the reasons that I was given for that decision. We've been in a trend in CGI where every, every advancement was awe-inspiring. Realism seemed unattainable. So then we got to the point where now it looks real. And now we're bored. <laughs> we wanted all of the elements, no matter where they came from in the pipeline, to feel like they were painted by one single hand. And the people that need to do this lighting system are people who not to paint light. The bulk of the team was a very young crew of uh, kids out of school uh, that had most of them not have one single uh, professional job. And all of a sudden, you're putting them to work on something where the bar is this high, right? It was interesting to see 45 to 60-year-olds and then 20 to 27-year-olds and, like, nothing in the middle, right? It's like that's where the CGI bomb exploded and nobody got trained into the animation for, for all that time. But there's a resurgence in the interest by students that want to learn that technique, and, uh, and it's great. I, I felt like I created the environment in which I would love to work at myself. We got really lucky. We had great casting directors. They sent a list of their proposals for the character of Klaus. On top of the list was J.K. Simmons, and I just put it down and said, yes, please. <laughs> and they didn't even look at the others. And, and he said yes. Like a week later, they told me, like, uh, yeah, he's in. I'm like... Really? And JK was a, a true professional. He did that whole monologue of him telling his backstory, and he did the whole thing in one take, and then we we were in tears. We were in the booth going, yes, that's, that's pretty good. That's pretty. <laughs> no, it was it was uh, amazing, right? And then Rashida was um, a godsend because she's a writer herself, and then she would say, I'm not sure that's how Alva would say it, or I'm not sure Alva would even say that at all. And uh, man, I let her school me, and uh, and then she she improved almost every line. <laughs>
Norm was fantastic too. Norm was just, uh, you know, such a great, honest, uh, timid, you wouldn't imagine, timid guy, right? But then once the, you know, we start rolling, he became this larger than life, you know, sarcastic boatman. Is the weather always like this? Yeah, we're having a bit of a heat wave. The one that was the hardest to 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 figure out was uh, Jesper. Jesper Johansson, postman. We were never properly. <laughs> There's a real danger when you have a character like Jesper that he might become unlikable to the audience. And if people decide I don't like this guy, they shut that door. They don't go on this journey with him. Then you don't have a story. And uh, but you still have to make him, you know, a bit of a jerk. Forgive me, I'm kind of a dreamer, but isn't that why we do it? Hmm? Hmm? <coughs> so you need, you need someone who can pull it off. And Jason turned out to be the perfect, uh, the perfect guy for that. Because even when he's doing horrible things, you still like him. Uh, he loves to improvise. He did this thing with a little kid's voice. Remember when I was uh, help you with the letters and all that? Daddy, can I help you mail the letters? Can I help you put the medals in the letters and put them in a the stamp with the pump? Wait, 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 wait. And I, we just cracked up, and it was like, and it became such iconic moment for the character. A true selfless act always sparks another. A true selfless act always sparks another. That's uh, it, it is the whole film is just to convey the uh, uh, the most poetic version of that message. It is true, you know, someone holds a door for you, you like to hold a door for someone else. It just, it's human nature, you know, and it's good to remind people of that.